He is a three-time Pro Bowler, played 11 seasons with the Philadelphia Eagles, started 165 games with the team, inducted into the team's Hall of Fame in 2021 with the other big man on the other side, John Runyon. He is Trey Thomas. He's with us on a gallon of questions. Trey, I appreciate you, my friend. Thank you so much. No problem, man. I told you hey, anything for a Golden Ram alum. I am. You know, my son just went there. Uh, it's in his freshman year. They're playing basketball. So, you know, once I re- once you reached out to me, I looked you up and I was like, all right, cool. Golden Ram alum. Yeah, I do. The I love it. I love it. How's he like it there so far? I loved it out there. Oh, uh, yeah. He's, he's having a blast. You know, as a parent, you know, he, he's just like, oh, my God, I just sent my son off to school. You know, I, I just want to, you know, there are there lessons that I didn't that I skipped maybe, you know, I'm just hoping that, you know, it all works out, but he's been good. It's been, it's really been a good experience. So do you far. Love, like, I'm sure you went out there as a parent, you got to do the whole like uh tour the campus, talk to people, that sort of thing. What'd you think of it out there? Oh, I really, I like the area, you know, I really enjoy going out there. I, I, I go out my, my every other weekend. I try not to go. My wife is always like, all right, you know what, let, let, let it be. You know, you don't need to go out there every weekend. I'm like, hey, man, do you need anything? Do you need some waters? You know, I could come bring you some Gatorades if you need something. You know, He's like, but, dad, uh, dad, no, leave me alone, good. man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I'm there all the time. No, nah, but it's been good. It's been good. And then this weekend is family weekend, so I might go out there a little bit this weekend. And go very out. cool, very cool. It's been a minute since I've been out there, but I, I love the campus. All the people there are so great that work there. So that's, a, that's an A-plus uh, choice there for your son. But uh Besides being a Westchester parent, what else are you up to these days? I just hanging out, man. You know, just enjoying my family. You know, uh, doing some pregame shows on Inside the Birds and stuff. So you know, just kind of keeping. Busy. And what's up? You still doing the paint thing, the Pinot? Oh yeah, yeah. We still have our Pinot's palette in Cherry Hill, so we still do paintings. Uh, so I actually, I just taught a class last night, uh, which was fun. You know, so, you know, I didn't think I would be uh, into the artistic thing, but it's a lot of fun. Wait, so her. you actually, like, if you cool. show up, Trey Thomas is going to, you'll host the class? Sometimes. It depends. You know, you never know. <laughs> you know, sometimes people will book it and they ask for me, but, or, you know, like, if we don't have an artist that can step in and do it, you know, if we have other things going on in our studio, sometimes I'll step in. If it's a painting that I feel like I can hold down, yeah, I get up there and I do a painting. I love it. That's awesome. Um, all right, so that's yeah. pretty cool. Besides so, that, what else is cool right now? The Philadelphia Eagles are back 2-0, and looking pretty strong, especially after that Monday night win against Minnesota. What are your overall thoughts after the first two games? Well, after, especially after this game, after this past game, you know, that's why I wanted to do this interview in front of this jersey right here. This is the greatest team in NFL history. And this right now is how I see this team. Like, if you're not shooting for the 72 Dolphins right now, what are you doing? Because, I mean, this team right now is really has a lot of talent across the board. And the way you saw Jalen Hurst just go out there and perform this past weekend, I'm like, you know what? I, I don't see anybody that can touch us right now unless there's like some massive string of injuries that come along that, that throw us off. But the way this team is performing right now, if they're not shooting for the 72 Dolphins, what are we doing? Wow. Trey, I did not expect you to come yeah. anywhere near that when we started talking about the Eagles. Uh, that, hey, I, I, <laughs> I like it that let's shoot for the top, obviously. Did you believe that? 72 Dolphins. Right, exactly. Did you believe that this team, obviously, I don't think you thought they would be 17 or 19-0 and 0 before the season started, but what were your expectations and how how have they changed now just through two games? You know, I, you know just going into the season, I, I wasn't – when you go – the way things went through training camp, I did kind of have a little concern just because – you know, the guys only played, what, eight snaps in the first preseason yeah. game. And then you don't see any other reps from them until the first game. And, you know, in that first game, wasn't that impressive? You know, the first game was kind of like, all right, you went out there against Detroit. You came out of there with the win. But, I mean, you scored, what, the second or third highest point set uh, of the um, so far. But then Detroit was right there behind you. So, you know, it, it kind of – 
you know, it was uh, I really didn't go away feeling feeling too good about that. But then in this past game, you know, you just saw how the defense clicked. Right. You know, when you got out there against Minnesota, you just saw how the defense clicked, how the secondary just rose to the challenge. And I'm like, man, you know, if we can continue to play like this, 72 Dolphins is what I'm talking about right now. You know, it's interesting you brought up about not being able to see much of them through training camp. I mean, really all we saw was them in a couple of joint practices as a as a full first team on both sides of the ball. Now, you're a guy who played in 165 games. You guys went through some really difficult training camps under Andy Reid. The game has completely changed. Um, obviously, it was a different time when, when you came up and, and Andy did things differently. But does that surprise you that they can get away with a training camp that, for lack of a better – I'm not a football player, I'm, but I'll call it soft. It's softer than it used to be. Uh, does it surprise you that they can get yeah. away with that kind of, of style of camp and yet they're out 2-0, and they look great? Yeah, you know what? Well, that, well that first game was not great. The second game, you kind of turned it on a little bit. You know, I think that the offensive line started playing a little bit better. Defensive line started playing a little bit better. So sometimes when you have a camp like that, it takes a little bit longer for guys to get revved up, to get their bodies like, all right, I'm in game mode. The thing that I guess with Coach Reed's camps, it was so physical and like we just came out of camp. We were primed because we had already beat ourselves up throughout training camp. And so to, to, by the time we got ready for games, it was, you know what, that's it's easier than what we went through during practice and training camp. So, you know, for them, I think that it's trying to get the guys going in because, you know, everybody like, hey, man, the, the whole flipping the switch doesn't really exist. And, you know, I think that it just took a couple that, – that, that, that first game to kind of wake everybody up, to get that little pop in the mouth. Like, all right, you know what, we really got to get going. I mean, against Minnesota, they just really came out and showed out. That was, I mean, I think by far the most impressive that we have seen Jalen Hurts play. Uh, everything was crisp. His arm looked good. His decision-making looked good. Uh, the running, obviously, that continues to be – maybe the best part of his game, but he put it all together. I think that was his best performance against Minnesota. Do you, do you agree with that? Oh yeah, absolutely. I think it was definitely uh, one of his better performances. Uh, you know, I thought that the line did a pretty solid job of protecting him. I think he did a good job of just making, you know, some good reads, you know, I think they walked out of there with two sacks, I believe, but then, you know, you got a couple of them where he's running around, he gets hit in the backfield, you know, it is what it is, but I think his decision making has been Chris throughout this uh, this time, and uh, you know I just hope that he just continues on this trajectory and just uh, keeps it going this way. So you you talking about an undefeated season? I don't think would be possible without the yes. move to acquire AJ Brown this off season. Monumental. The guy looks like you know the second coming here at least in Philly of Terrell Owens. Like he's he's that good. They're mm. calling him. Batman around here it, it's it's nuts what we've seen from him just through two games how much different is this offense do you think with him involved now and Devonte kind of slides into that number two and then you've got Quez who scored a touchdown uh, against Minnesota he's the number three guy but he's the speedster of the bunch yeah I think it, uh bringing AJ and just really um made this receiving core a, a well-rounded group. You know, you have a, a ball hawk out there that you can always get the ball to that's a physical receiver um, that's going to go out there and win. And then you have uh, Smith that's out there that's a crisp route runner, you know, that's going to always be an option for you. And then Quez is the one that's going to take you over the top. And then you can't forget about Dallas Goddard because, I mean, right. you know, he's a, a pounder in this offense. So, I mean, it, you have so many weapons – out there that I, I think bringing AJ in just made it that much better for this offense. I, you know, it, it, it's a very talented group. You're a former left tackle. You did it for a long time at a really high level. Um, this line is so talented across the board. Uh, Lane and, and Jordan Mailata on, on the ends, and then you've got Dickerson and Sayamalo, and Sayamalo just coming back from a major injury. He looks like he hasn't really missed a beat. And then, of course, Kelsey in the middle. Uh, what what do you love most about watching this line? Because a lot of people don't – the average fan may not be looking at the line when you've got A.J. Brown catching 10 passes or you've got Jalen Hurts running over teams. 
But when you look at this line, like what is it that you see that makes them so special? Uh, I think they've gotten better with their pass protection. Uh, I think Jordan Maialata is definitely getting better. You know, he's starting to uh, work his hands a little bit more. Uh, Kelsey has just been consistent throughout his game play, you know, um, over the years. You know, he's definitely been, a, 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 you know, just that person in the middle that you can always count on. Um, Lane and Dickerson is, is very, you know, continuing to grow and be a better player out there. You know, Isaac was the one question mark that I had just coming in, switching sides, Go, you know, going from left guard to right guard, you know, but he was a center before right. all of this. So, you know, I didn't think that that transition would be too hard for him, but it was a concern just because he's played so many years on the left side. But I right. think that the, the switch over to right has um, been pretty smooth for him so far. And then Lane is just what he is. I mean, he's an animal out there. So I think that you really have a good group of guys right now. If they can continue to just – stay together and, and stay healthy, you know, you have a really good group that can that you can continue to lean on. And um, and I think that that's really what helps with Jalen, knowing that, okay, if you can, can trust the protection and look downfield, it, it only makes him better as a quarterback. I'm interested in what you said, too, about Jordan Mailata using his hands a little bit more. Uh, the, I mean, the guy hasn't played football for that long, and yet he looks like he's the left tackle of the future. Uh, what do you see the possibility of greatness w with someone like him? And what do you think needs me needs to maybe get a little bit better in his game? I think he needs to, you, he needs to play with length a little bit more to me. I mean, when you're, when you're out there, you're six, seven, 360 pounds, you know, you tend to body up with defensive ends a little bit more, meaning that you're allowing them to bull rush you. You're making it a wrestling match instead of just shooting your hands and using your length. I mean, because I mean, he has telephone poles out there, his arms. I mean, if he can play and learn to shoot his hands a little bit more and play with length and extension, I think that that would just make him 10 times better. But, uh, you know, Coach Stoutland is there, you know, working them a lot, and he's teaching them certain different techniques. And uh, and I think that they they're both have just, um, especially Jordan, has really taken to it. Mm -hmm. And uh, if he doesn't make the Pro Bowl this year, it would be a shame. Yeah, he looks like he's got all the talent in the world, which is crazy for not having played for, what, maybe five, six years total now. It's it's really impressive what, what he does on a daily basis. Um, the coach. And what I'm starting to see from him a little yeah. bit more is that he's starting to talk trash. And, you know, <laughs> that tells you that he's starting to get a little bit more comfortable with what he's doing on the field. You know, when he's running up the guys and he's mouthing off and all that, I like that because now – you know, that tells me that he's feeling a lot more comfortable in what he has to do out there on the field. When you're thinking too much, you can't get out there and run off at the mile. But, you know, he can now that he's doing that more, sure. that shows me that he that he's feeling a lot more comfortable as a player. That After a great show, that's what I do. I come off the set, start talking trash to everyone, lets them know I had a good yeah. show. It's the same thing. Exactly. <laughs> How about the coach? Uh, Nick Sirianni uh, looks like he is also evolving – He's not calling the plays like we thought he would when he first got here. He relinquished that duty to Shane Steichen uh, last year. But just, you know, overall thoughts of, of what you, you think of, of Sirianni's job thus far. I think that, you know what, he, 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 he seems to be like a really good player's coach. Mm -hmm. You know, someone that everybody can rally around, like the guys really enjoy him, they they he gets them going, you know, and they have this energy about him, you know, and he supports everything that the guys are doing. You come up with a T-shirt or whatever, he's wearing your shirt. You know, he, he wears this, the, I mean, it's not, I mean, you know, he puts, you get injured, he puts your helmet sticker on his right. helmet, on his hat. I mean, there was one year where the damn visor had probably about nine stickers on there. I mean, you know, didn't have room for his pins. But, you know, just stuff like that. Players rally around and they feel that. And, you know, and for whatever reason, you know, the guys are rallying around him. And then, you know, when you bring in a certain mix of guys like an A.J. Brown, you have Speak Play Slay out there, Kelsey, guys that, you know, that are voices within that locker room. When, when you're a head coach and you get the energy going, those other guys around that would keep it going and will we'll have it transition onto the field. And uh, to me, it just seems like he's just doing a really good job of creating that energy within the facility and, and, and bringing back that family atmosphere that had kind of, you know, 
eased out of the out of the walls for a little bit. And sure. I think that you know Doug carried it, brought it back in, and then Nick Sirianni has really kept it going. I'm I'm glad you mentioned that too because it could be taken as like this guy is trying too hard, right? Like he's he's corny, but we don't like him because all the t-shirts and the stickers he's just he's going overboard but it's apparent that the players actually like this guy and and will pretty much do anything for him they there is something about him that just connects well i don't know that you can necessarily put a definition on it but it's working in that way yeah yeah it's working i mean you know and as a player you want someone that's that's going to go out and support you and and, and and know that you that he has your back, and I, I mean, to me, I, it's working. Whatever he's doing is working, and he needs to continue. And, and don't worry about what everybody else is saying. If you got to try hard, try hard, because well, all you're worried about is what's going on within Nova Care Complex, and you're just trying to get these guys to go out there and perform at the highest, um, at their highest ability, and that's what he's doing. You are someone who got a chance to see defensive lineman up close for a long time so I'm sure you know that but you didn't play it but you know the position pretty well uh, I think that looking at the Eagles defense if there's one key to the season being a positive or undefeated as as you're saying the defensive line really has to get after the quarterback I think we did not see that in week one against Detroit but that changed completely against Minnesota in week two so just how important are BG and Cox and and sweat and those guys toward this becoming that kind of season that you think it can be? Well, see, for me, I I look at the defensive line a little different because in order for you to create pressure, you have to have coverage. You see what I'm saying? So, like, a lot of people are like, oh, yeah, you know what? Our defensive line doesn't have all of these sacks. Well, when the quarterback can get rid of the ball at 1.8, one two seconds i mean for a defensive line you got to give the defensive line time to get there so you go back and you look at the the game against detroit and i and when i watch a game i sit there with pants it's different color pants and it's a a stopwatch and i time each throw and i'm sitting there like all right you know what the ball keeps coming out at 1.8 it's out at 1.9 two seconds i mean you go back and you look at that detroit game i don't i I don't think golf went over 2.3 seconds in a pass, so the defensive line can't get there. They don't have time. So in order for them to get there, you have to have coverage. So when you go back and you look at that Minnesota game, you know, look at how you know, the coverage was there. I mean, big play Slay came out there and locked Jefferson down. You got Bradbury over there locking awesome. guys down. So it made the gave the quarterback time, gave the defensive line time to get to the quarterback. You know, I go back and I look at um, – it was the Chicago Bears that had the most sacks in a single season. I think they had 72 sacks in a season. And I'm like, man, and everybody talks about, man, that was such a great defense. And I'm like, man, that must have been a nasty secondary on that team. Because, I mean, you know, for you to go out there and you can can, can, can get that many sacks in a sure. season, man, that secondary must have been nasty. It's almost like what comes first, the chicken or the egg? Is it the pass rush that makes <laughs> – the secondary better, or is it the secondary that makes the pass rush better? But it's all got to work together, and I think you definitely saw yeah. that uh, against Minnesota. Now, if there's a weakness across the roster that would keep them from being undefeated, as you're saying, uh, what do you think that that is right now? What stands out to you? I, You know what? I, I, I don't see any weaknesses on this team. Um. I mean, Jake Elliott is the best at his position. I mean, you know, one of them. How's yeah. our punter? I don't, I, you know, I really don't look yeah. at that much. Uh, well, I mean, if, if all goes well, he's probably not going to get a ton of work. So who knows? Yeah. So I mean, you know, what I'm so I, I don't know. I mean, how's our hydration program? I think our hydration <laughs> program is pretty solid. I don't know. I'll have I, to find you know, out. I think, yeah, I, I don't know. I, to me, real for real, like when I really look at this team right now. I think Howie did a really good job of putting together this this group. And to me, I, I, I'm not trying to be a fanboy at all, but I really don't see any weaknesses on this team, just across the board. Yeah, the hydration program might be it. But hey, they're, they're super healthy right now, which is another thing that you can kind of point back. Yeah, you can point back to, yeah. to training camp and not hitting – uh, not a ton of pads throughout training camp that they were trying to keep these guys fresh. 
and the injury report, zero guys on it. So that must be working too. Yeah, I mean, you know, even the training staff is on, you know, they're doing well, you know, so everybody's top notch right now. Uh, but I, I really, for real, like I, I don't see um, any weaknesses on this team. I, I, you know, I just want everybody to stay healthy. If we can keep everybody healthy throughout these games, you know, I really like our chances. Uh, just looking around the landscape of the NFL, I don't know how much you're paying attention to everything that's going on, but um, obviously the Eagles look like they can certainly be a contender in the NFC. Who in the conference maybe scares you? You got the Rams obviously coming off the Super Bowl last year, but Dallas looks beatable. The Giants are 2-0. and They're not really scaring anyone. Uh, the Bucks look no. beatable. Uh, Brady can can certainly go on a run here, but they do not look like the same team they were a year ago. So looking around the landscape of the NFL, who – who stands out to you? Who scares you a little bit? There's no one right now against this squad. I, I think the way this, this team is playing right now, I don't see anyone that really, like, scares me. I think the Rams is always going to be a good matchup for this group. Uh, you know, but for us, like, I, I really don't see anyone. Because uh, even right now, Green Bay really isn't what they used to be. You know, so I don't really see any teams that's that's across this board that, that really causes concern for me uh right now you know just because i i think that this team is really firing on all cylinders dallas isn't what they you know you have uh that go down and without so, that you know, yeah. all of a sudden now that team i mean their offensive line is in shambles you know you got jason peters out there 40 years old big ups to him saying <laughs> you know what man i'm gonna go out there and go try to give it one more year and i'm like it's unreal. man i couldn't imagine that 40 years old saying look all right you know here we go. Let's get down in this three-point stance one more time, man. Let's go get it. But, you know, hey, man, congrats to him. But, um, JP must know, not have a ton of hobbies, if you're if you're asking me. Nah, man, sometimes, man, as a player, that's all you know. Sure. You know, and you just want to, you know, that this is what you do. And, and if you can continue to do it, if your body will allow you to do it, why not? I love it. I love it. All right, just one more time, putting you on record. Undefeated season? We're going to go with that? Absolutely. Undefeated. That's 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 what my expectations are right now. We are chasing the 72 Dolphins, which is the greatest team in NFL history. I love it. I love it. Trey, I got one more thing for you. Gallon of Questions podcast. Okay. So we'll just pull out some ra- – this could be anything in here. There's just a bunch of questions thrown in here. Anything across the board. You ready? Okay. All right, we'll throw a few at you. All right. First one, what is Trey Thomas's hidden talent? A hidden talent? Do you have a hidden talent? I guess that I could paint. I didn't know I could paint. That is a hit that has been unearthed. I didn't know that either. That's amazing. Yeah, I didn't know either. It was just, I started probably like five years ago, and it's been on ever since. I love it. That's so cool. Uh, what is the happiest moment of your playing career? Being drafted here. I think uh, being drafted here in 98 was the, the biggest, my, one of my happiest moments um, in my career. I love that. All right, here's, this is a tough one. So you're back in school. Let's just say you're back in, in school, and you need one former teammate to help you study for the final exam. Who would be the biggest help of any former teammate you've ever had? <laughs> I, I'm thinking, what, Ryan? <laughs> I would have to call <laughs> on Ryan to help me study. He would keep us focused. And dialed in. The rest of the guys, no. Hugh Douglas would be no good. I was just about to say, yeah, right, like Hugh, okay. Yeah, no. You'd have to cheat if Hugh was involved. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, Beach or mountains? Beach. Definitely beach. Beach beach over mountains. All right, let's see. We got a couple more in here. Uh, Andy Reid talked a lot about sweet and sour pork. Did you ever see him actually eat it? No, nah, I never. I've never seen Big Red eat. You know, in all the ever? time that we, no, nah, I don't. I don't think I've ever sat across from Big Red and watched him eat. Wow, I yeah, can't believe I it. I, I know. I know. We always had mentions of cheeseburgers a lot, but we never saw. I, I never saw him eat. I would go and get one, but I never saw him eat. I don't How think I've ever that? watched Big Red eat. Huh. I did not expect you to say that. Uh, favorite thing about Philly. <sighs> the fan base, you know, uh, the fan base, man, you know, it, <laughs> it, 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 it's something. <laughs> it, it, it is something, you know, and, and when you come here, 
it's one of those things that, you know, and I tell young guys all the time, like, look, man, you know, you have to earn that. You got, you have to earn it. Don't think that just because of where you came from is going to carry you through this. You have to earn it. And, you know, once you earn it, it's there for life, but you, you got to earn it though. I love that. It's, it's true. We can be difficult here. There's no doubt about it, but we oh, can be the most di- loving fan base also. It's very difficult, but, you know, <laughs> hey, you got to earn it. Speaking of difficult, most difficult defensive end you ever had to go against? Uh, Simeon Rice. Simeon Rice was um, one of the toughest guys that I had to deal with. He made us change the way we played the game. Uh, wow. You know, he made us start, you know, as an offensive tackle, you start – they all, you know, they used to teach you to shoot both hands at the same time. Well, Simeon would force you to shoot your hands and then would clamp your outside arm. So uh, Juan Castillo and I would go in there and watch a lot of film, and he started chain. We started punching with one hand and only bringing the outside hand if we really needed it. So he made us change the way we played, you know, uh, which helped me as I as I could continue to on throughout my career. But Simeon, sure. hands down, was one of the hardest defensive ends I had to deal with. Wow, that's a great. That's a very cool. That's a good, great answer. Uh, looks like we got two more here. Favorite wine? Now that you're into Pinot, like, what's your favorite? My favorite wine. wine I like. A, I like red blends. You know, uh, I'm a red blend guy. Um, so right now we we're just drinking a lot of different red blends, and <laughs> you know, and I mean it's a lot of red blends. Like I, I, I you know, I sat down and I talked to my wife, and you know. I'm like, look, babe, do we have a problem? You know what I'm saying? Like, is there something that we need to talk about? Because, I mean, I, I go and I look at all these. I mean, we got stacks of bottles everywhere, you know. All, all of them, you know, we've enjoyed ourselves just drinking all of this wine. And I'm like, babe, hey, you know. They say a couple of glasses of wine every night is good for you. It's good for the heart, It's medicinal. Right? You know what I'm saying? So, exactly. we're having medicinal wine, you know. <laughs> all right, we got one more. Last one. Who's your favorite current eagle to watch? Oh, my favorite current man. I like watching Jordan Mailata. You know, just because I'm like, look, man. You know, I want to get over there and just like, look, man. Okay, look, man. I, I need you to shoot your hands. I just need you to shoot your hands. The timing of it, because you would be so deadly if you got the timing of the punch down. My God, you would destroy defensive ends. And I watch him, and I and I always want to just run over there and like, look, man. Stop Come grabbing! On. Like, you know, when I, I went for the um, I went to the alumni game, the, the one of the preseason games, and you know, yeah. and they were like, "Look, man, you guys need to stay behind this rope." And I'm like, "I'm all out there on the field. I'm over there with Lane." <laughs> I'm like, "Look at Lane. I need you to stop grabbing and get the punching, man. Get back to punching." And you know, and you know, it, it gets a wait. Someone actually it. told you that you had to stay behind the rope. Yeah, you're supposed to stay behind the ropes. You know, like, hey, man, stay behind the ropes. And I'm all over there with Coach Style. You know, and that's why I don't go to practices too. You know, because yeah, it's because you'll run out on the field. Yeah, yeah, you know what I'm Trade. saying. Like I try to, I, I try to create boundaries for myself. It's <laughs> <laughs> awesome, Trey Thomas. Thank you so much, my friend. That was a lot of fun. Appreciate the time. Good luck with everything. Great to catch up with you. Appreciate it. Undefeated.